Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. In today's video, again, four amazing Bitcoin charts, a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, and talking about the news because we just found out who is definitely not Satoshi. Now, let's quickly jump into the first couple of charts to show you exactly what is happening to Bitcoin at the moment. I want to teach you to zoom out a little bit, but also understand why we are not moving massively up now right at this moment let's quickly jump into the stars to say what they have to tell us bam the first chart for today guys of course again that four hour chart showing you that indeed there is a sell signal on the four hour chart so we should be taking profit from the trade it was not a massive trade but still it was a positive trade and positive and, and profit but you could also still stay in this trade as no candle has closed yet down below the yellow stepping line. As you can see, the yellow stepping line is turning flat again and the Bollinger Band is compressing. And mostly we will stay around this level, now 3940K, till the Bollinger Band has completely compressed and the yellow line will start to move again. And then the yellow line will start to move up or down. And if these candles stay above that yellow line, because we're trading the four hour chart, so that's a longer trade, we can still stay in this trade and maybe wait for another move upwards out of that compressed Bollinger Band before we take profit. So in this system, you can take profit at the moment you see a sell signal, but you can also take profit at the moment you will see a candle close down below the yellow stepping line. But if you look close to the chart, if you wait till that moment, that would mean break even or even a small loss as the yellow stepping line has been going downward a little bit, guys. If you look at the other indicators, we can see that here, for example, that white line is at the level of 39. We can even go up to the level of 80. The blue line is still above it, which means yeah, we are not going down directly. It's not like a very bearish move at the moment. That's also an indication that you can stay in. And of course, on the bottom, we can see there is still a lot of green on that chart. Uh, the red line is on top, though, which is always indicated, hey, we are turning a little bit bearish at the moment. But still, there is so much green, that there is no blue or yellow on the chart. So there is still enough bullishness to stay in this trade, if you ask me. But that's only when you want to take the risk to also close that trade with a small loss. Because in trading, you don't always win. Now let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. First, this chart, guys. On this chart, you can see what I was talking about just before. You can see there is a lot of liquidations between the 38 and 39K level, all those orange bars at the red side, but also the other side, around 40 to 41K, there is a lot of liquidations happening. This is the Binance BTC USDT liquidation map. So you can find this one on CoinGlass. Um, yes, this is always showing you, okay, where will the longs and where will the shorts be liquidated? Very interesting to see those volumes over there. And that's why we can also see that the market is indecisive. Where are we going to liquidate first? First the shorts and then the longs or the other way around, guys. Now, then we have this chart. On this chart, we can see that every time it's the same cycle. It will take from the bottom to the top around 1,000 days and then from the top to the bear market bottom around 365 days. Then again, from the bottom to the top, around 1064 days and then again from the top to the bottom 365 days then again from the bottom to the top 1060 days and again 360 days to the bottom if we would calculate 1060 days from the bottom to the top yes we would of course arrive in september 2025 like i've been sharing with you already for months or even years already guys it's very simple to analyze the four year cycle if we look at Ethereum versus the altcoin market cap dominance, then we can see that at the moment the Ethereum dominance is 42.5%, which means that the altcoin dominance for all the other tokens is 57.5%. If you now look to the left all the way to 2020, we can see that some peaks around uh, that bull market top, we can see the dominance of Ethereum increasing. But on average, it is always around these levels. So there is nothing different between Ethereum and the altcoins dominance market cap now. If you look to all the dominances over here, then we can see the current Bitcoin dominance is around 49.8%. ETH is around 18.2%. We can see the stable coins are around 7.8% and the altcoin uh, market cap dominance is around 24.4%. If you now look back to the period October 2022 at that moment the altcoin 
was 28.3%, so that was 4% higher. And the stable coins was 13.9%, so that was uh, almost 6% higher. Bitcoin was lower, and Ethereum at that moment was almost equal. So we can see that the Ethereum dominance stays equal like all the time, it's almost a stable coin, <laughs> always around that 18%. And the fluctuations you can mostly see in the stable coins and in Bitcoin. So it's very important to look at the dominance. If you look to the previous stop in 2021, you can see that the dominance of Bitcoin was really big. I believe that the dominance of Bitcoin will become bigger and bigger and bigger, not only because of the spot ETFs, but also because of the new possibilities to build all these second layer uh, applications on the Bitcoin blockchain. So we have now the opportunities to build everything that's built on Ethereum, to build all of that also on Bitcoin blockchains. So that's going to drive more and more adoption to the Bitcoin and because of that create a bigger dominance for Bitcoin. Then we have this chart guys showing you the correlation between Bitcoin, the Nasdaq and the DXY. So we can see over here that every time when the DXY drops, we can see the Nasdaq and Bitcoin moving up. When the DXY drops, the Nasdaq and the Bitcoin is moving up. At the moment the chart looks like the DXI is again starting to drop and when that starts to drop again you can see those dotted two lines that will mean that the Nasdaq and Bitcoin again will go massively up so that's very impressive to see that correlation look at those arrows every time when you see the yellow arrow that's when Bitcoin is that sideways movement you know trying to break the previous all-time high trying to break the previous midline that is where you see the yellow arrow in the blue lines and then when that red line on the bottom goes downwards instead of sideways that is when you see Bitcoin and NASDAQ going up every time the same move so if you want to see what will happen next then if that red line and DXY is going to go down you already know that Bitcoin and the NASDAQ will be moving up I hope you really enjoy the charts guys yes they always give me the same message over and over and again guys on the short term a lot of volatility because there's a lot of liquidations around that 38 to 40k level but also around that 40 to 41k level and yes if we look a little bit zoomed out also around 45k level there is some liquidations going to happen so we could liquidate a lot of positions at the moment and that's why the market is very volatile and that is also why I'm going to give you the next trading tip but if it comes to Bitcoin, always remember guys, please zoom out. Look at that bigger picture. From now till the end of 2025, we will be in a bull run. And that's a very bullish moment in the four year cycle where we'll see a lot of runs and correction of 20 to 30% and again a run of a couple of hundred percent maybe and again a correction of 20 to 30%. Zoom out. Look at that bigger picture. If you're not a trader that is able to daily trade the charts, then just lean back and enjoy this beautiful run all the way up to 2025 and keep watching my videos so that I can give you the notification of, okay, now I start to sell my Bitcoin. And the title of that video will also be better than I am starting to sell my Bitcoins to make it very clear. Now let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today is don't over trade. In these situations where the market is not completely clear if we go up or if we go down, please don't over trade. Sit this period out. Go do some fun thing, fishing, swimming, whatever you like. But don't over trade. Don't force yourself to take a trade every time again and again because if there are so many liquidations to the top and to the bottom there is going to be a very volatile market and the spread will not be really wide. So trading this is very difficult. This is the moment just to step back, let the market decide and then start to trade again. And when do you see that the market has decided? When you see the market moving upwards, coming down for confirmation and then again going up or the other way. When the market goes down, trying to come up to break that neckline and then go down again. That's the confirmation of a bearish moment. Bullish is to the upside, of course. So don't overtrade, always wait for confirmations of the market and when you get your confirmations, then you start trading again. And on today, I think it's 4.5 billion options that are about to expire. I think Bitcoin needs to be around 41,000 US dollar to be positive. 
So always, always, always inform yourself about all the things happening on the market. Because today 4.5 billion options will expire and it will have a small influence on the market. Keep your eye on the options, keep your eye on the charts on this beautiful Friday, but never over trade. Bam. The travel tip for today, guys, is about the world not being safe all over the place, guys. So it, sometimes when you're dining in these very busy places, it's always a good idea to wrap your bag around your chair or around your own leg, guys. Loop it around it. So you, you just put the handle around your leg or the, the chairs, guys. Because we, when we were in Brazil, for example, we were in this marketplace and people told us, always watch your bag here. So we did exactly what he told us. We took the bag, we put our leg through it, and we put it on the floor again. And then what happened 20 minutes later, like 10 kids came running onto the marketplace. They started to grab all bags and bam, they disappeared all kinds of directions and the police couldn't find them because they were like massively attacking and bam, massively uh, running away with it. So it's always important. If you have important stuff and expensive stuff and your wallet and everything in your bag, just don't hang it on your chair or put it on your table. Wrap it around the leg of a chair or on your own leg because it's way more safe that way and it's better to be sure than sorry. There is places in the world that is just not as safe as for example Thailand or any other place like Portugal. Very safe place. I have never seen theft there as well. Thailand, very safe place. Never seen theft there as well. I can even let my telephone on my motorbike stand and go for 10-20 minutes and the telephone will still be there guys. So here it's very safe. But there is countries where it's less safe and where you really need to pay attention to where you put your bag. That is the travel tip for today. Always pay attention to where you put your bag. The educational part for today, guys, is the difference between a million, a billion and a trillion. And to express that difference in a very simple way, I will give you in a calculation. If you make one dollar per second, you will be a millionaire within 12 days. You will be a billionaire in 31 years. And you will be a trillionaire in 31,000 years. That is how big the difference is. And we are throwing around these billions and trillions as if it is nothing. But there is a huge difference between a billion, a trillion and a million. A dollar per second, a millionaire in 12 days, a billionaire in 31 years and a trillionaire in 31,000 years. A huge difference between millionaire, billionaire and a trillionaire. I hope you understand it a little bit better now because of that example, guys. Now, that was the educational part. Let's jump into the next part. The news for today is that we found out that Craig Wright is not Satoshi. Craig Wright has lost his last appeal to court to prove that he is Satoshi. So by now we all know he is not Satoshi. He was not able to prove he had the private key to the 1 million Bitcoin. He has, not, he has never been able to prove anything. And the strangest thing is, if Satoshi would give away the white paper for free to the whole world, why would he then ever claim back that he is Satoshi? So two complete different people, characters, cannot be one in my honest opinion. So for me, it was very, very clear, very early that Greg Wright was not Satoshi, that he just wanted to make a shitload of money. And he did make a shitload of money. And maybe he has the ownership of some patents and all the technology shit, but he's definitely not Satoshi. And now court has ruled the same. He was not able to appeal anymore. He lost his appeal. He is definitely not Satoshi in the eyes of the law. Maybe still in the eyes of his followers, but not in the eyes of the law and definitely not in the eyes of me. So that was the news for the day. Greg Wright is not Satoshi. And the last part of the video, guys, is the inspirational part. And today I have a very simple quote. For every minute that you're angry, you're losing 60 seconds of happiness. As simple as that. Every time when you get angry about someone else or on yourself, you lose seconds of happiness. So don't focus on anger, but focus on joy. If you are angry about a situation that you can't solve, then please ignore it and start to focus on happiness again, because else you're losing seconds of happiness. So why would you be focusing on all the minutes being angry and mad, even days or weeks, if you understand that the moment you are angry, 
for days or weeks, you're losing days and weeks of happiness. Just don't focus on anger. Ignore anger. Ignore that negativity and start to focus on joyful things and happiness. They will make you less angry again. Focusing on being angry will not make you less angry, will probably make you even more angry. It doesn't work. Just doesn't work. Start to focus on happiness, joyful thing, and laughing, and you will be less angry and more happy. Very short but powerful life lesson for today. Every minute that you are angry, you're losing 60 seconds of happiness. And that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's shorter video, then please give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you prefer, like 10 to 15 minute videos, or do you prefer the 15 to 30 minute videos? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Friday, a beautiful weekend. I will be there with a live AMA on Saturday, English, and Sunday, Dutch again. So hopefully you will be there as well. Thank you for watching. Wish you an amazing Friday, and see you tomorrow again. Bam.